Okay, in an earlier video, I showed you how to solder these female barrel connectors. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to solder the male connector. The male connector fits into the female connector to provide power to your electrical electronic projects. Okay, so um, to get started, the male connector has a cover that unscrews like this. Good catch. Um, and inside there's uh, a, term, uh, a tab that connects to the inside of the connector and another longer tab that connects to the, to the outside. Uh, there's no standard but most of the time the uh, the center, the, the middle tab is the positive connector but you need to double check that for your particular project uh, before you get started. Okay, so um, I've got a cable here with two wires going to connect the red wire which is um, in this project is going to is my hot wire, my positive wire. I'm going to connect that to the center um, of the tube and then the black wire to the outside. You can see here that I've already uh, stripped and trimmed them and the, the black wire is quite a bit shorter than the, the red wire um, and it may actually become shorter as, as, I, as I work on this. Uh, another thing uh, to remember when you're doing this is it's absolutely crucial to remember to put the cover on, oh, slip that on over the wire before you start soldering because that's one of those things. Uh, this is a, a, a piece of uh, eighth inch shrink heat shrink tubing uh, that I'll be using to to make it look a little bit prettier and look, make it a little bit stronger. Okay, so um, as I did before, I'm going to put the plug the male connector into a female connector before I put it into my helping hands um, and that just helps keep it steady. Uh, I'm going to gently bend the longer, the outer uh, tab back so that it's out of the way for when I work on the, uh, the inner tab and I'm going to turn it so it's facing to the top, right? Because that's because I want to create like a little cup into which I'm going to put the solder here. Alright, so let's snap that into my helping hand here. And now for the, start starting with the, the red wire, the positive wire, uh, I'm going to actually grab the very tip of it and create a bend in it, kind of like that, and that makes it easier to feed through the hole here. And so I'm just going to feed it through, and the curvature actually makes it so that it goes down in to that center hole much more easily. And once I've got it in there, I'm going to use my pliers to crimp it a little bit and and just to bend this into the loop, to the center there. All right. So once uh, you've got that in place and you know if you spend a lot of time, you know if you spend if you take your time, you spend your time getting all these things set up right to begin with, um, it makes things go a lot better. I use this really thin solder. I actually didn't plan this. It just kind of happened by accident because that's what I ordered. Um, but the nice thing about this is it melts really quickly and really easily. Uh, I use a very fine tip on my soldering iron and so I'm just going to place that in there and it gets started. I'm going to just put a fairly decent amount of solder down into that hole. 
Right? And again, these particular th this particular brand of barrel jack that I bought, um, I didn't tin it ahead of time. So a lot of, a lot of tutorials would see uh, they recommend that you tin tin them ahead of time to make this process go a little bit faster. But if you get a nice glob in there, um, it will it will hold it nice and neatly. So I'll clean my soldering iron tip. You should always clean it after every use because uh, one of the secrets to happy soldering is a clean soldering iron. Okay, so let that cool, letting that cool a little bit should be should be good now. So cool enough to hold it. So I'm gonna spin it around. So now the the outer tab, right? The outer tab uh, is forming a little trough into which I'll be able to put the black wire, and it will also serve as the receptacle for the solder, right? So again, maneuver that into place the way you want, right? And then putting a nice, generous glob of solder in here and let that heat up so that it gets both the tab and the wire and is able to form a nice strong bond. One of the things that I, would, I was really fascinated to learn about soldering is that you're not just melting the solder and it sort of solidifies in place, it actually forms a chemical bond with both the wire and the surface that you're soldering to so um, it holds everything together nice and tightly. Okay, so um, a key thing I learned here is not to saw, put, there's a hole here and you could, you know, put the wire through the hole either from the outside in or from the inside out. Um, but whenever that wire was on the outside of that prong, I found that I had trouble getting the, uh, the screw cap back to, to fit over it um, cleanly again. All right, but the, but the trick here is if you've done this well, then um, you'll have, you know, you won't have melted or otherwise compromised the insulation around the red wire, and um, so there's not going to be a risk of creating a short. You also won't have melted this black plastic here, which also is there to insulate the inside from the outside. And if you've done that nice and cleanly, right, then you won't need any additional insulation of any sort to protect these wires from each other. Uh, and so I'm just going to very carefully crimp this down so now that I have the all the wires connected together uh, I'll bring up that piece of heat shrink tubing that I fit around the whole thing ahead of time and it's just barely big enough in fact I could even these together just a little bit more and it would fit better. Um, one thing you have to be careful of if you do that if you bring the heat shrink tubing up too quickly uh, while these components are still hot then it will shrink melt and shrink while you're trying to get it over top of your thing you're trying to protect. Alright so let's just this up here. I've also learned the hard way that you shouldn't overheat your heat shrink tubing because it will expand again if you put if you fire it too long. And if you've done this well then this tube should fit cleanly nicely back up 
over the screw top. And you have a nice, pretty, clean barrel connector which can connect into the female end.